Navigating Transformation and Clarity. Welcome to your October 2023 monthly astrology forecast. So as the leaves change and the energy begins to shift as we head on into fall, we're in for a month of deep transformation, some insightful revelations, and some powerful shifts with the planetary movements. We're going to have a solar eclipse, a lunar eclipse that are going to emphasize themes of balance and material well-being. They're going to be urging us to release what's holding us back and embrace this transformative growth as we move forward. Mercury and the sun are both going to be in Scorpio, encouraging us to dive deep with our emotions and our thoughts, while Venus in Virgo is going to emphasize practical expressions of love. This month is an invitation to embrace the change, to reflect on your relationships and your values, to embark on a journey of inner exploration. Be open to transformation as the universal energies are here to guide us towards uh, greater clarity and more authenticity. Uh, to work to stay adaptable, to be open-minded as you navigate the planetary currents of October. My hope is that having this forecast available ahead of time is going to give you the areas of your life that are going to be most affected and impacted and have this opportunity to flow and to work with the changes that are occurring in your life. Remember that eclipses, they bring such dramatic shifts and that there's not an opportunity to go back. They eclipse people, places, and things into our life and out of our life. And so there is no opportunity to go back and it can sometimes be jarring and confusing. So at this time, my hope is that um, you will see this as an opportunity that this eclipse, the eclipses and the eclipse season, they're meant for growth. My hope is that the astrological insights that you gain will empower you to make the most of this transformative month. So stay tuned to the energies and um, stay in tune to them and continue to seek alignment with your higher self. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're a regular follower, thank you for your support, your thumbs up, your shares, your comments. I invite all of you to join me for my lives on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I'm going to have uh, one time a month for the new moon and uh, another time of the month for the full moon. And in between, I'm going to be offering tarot consultations. I also encourage you to sign up for my email where I share the latest happenings with links to find everything. And and if you're ready for an in-depth reading of your chart, you can schedule a personalized astrological reading at my website, willowgracemystic.com. So welcome, I'm your astrologer, Patricia Tate, and this is your October forecast. So for Sagittarius Sun and Sagittarius Rising, I wanna draw your attention to the areas of your chart that have the North and South node. So the North node is in your fifth house of fun, children, joy, affairs, gambling, things that bring joy to you, being childlike. And the 11th house, which is your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your social circles, your networks that you um, participate with in order to accomplish your dreams and hopes and goals. And so knowing that these two areas of your life are gonna be activated for the next month, all the other planetary aspects that as the, the month goes on in October, the eclipses are activating this and all the planets are, are initiating changes in your life that will affect these two areas of your, your um, future of what's going on. So we start off with Venus entering Virgo on October 8th. So as we move forward to October 8th, we have Venus and Virgo. Now this is at the top of your chart. Um, Virgo is structured, detailed, oriented, organized, you know, and Venus is what you love. It's cash, it's property. So with the month starting off with Venus, the planet of love and harmony, bringing things together, bringing people together, entering um, pragmatic Virgo. Relationships and aesthetics are gonna take more of a practical tone. So the things that you do at work, the people that you are connected with at work. Remember that the 10th house is your career, it's how people see you. So they're gonna see you as wanting to take more practical, um, more organized, more structured, um, uh, ways in order for you to do things. It's going to be you showing love through acts of service. It's going to be 
you appreciating the, the beauty of simplicity. You're going to need to, at this time, uh, focus on some self-care and attention to details in everything that has to do with matters of the heart. Then as we move forward um, to the 14th, this is when things really start to ramp up. So on the 14th, we have the South Node, the Moon, the Sun, and Mercury all in your 11th house of your dreams, your hopes, your wishes. Um, this is huge in that now we have this potent solar eclipse, new moon, in the diplomatic sign of Libra. Remember that Libra is the scales. It wants to find balance. It wants to negotiate things. But Libra, I also uh, equate to like the yoke on the ox and that uh, they're both tethered together. You are tethered to other people's decisions and they're tethered to yours. Like you cannot have one going one way and one going the other way. They're both working for the same goal, the same, uh, what drives them is the same direction. And so the eclipse is going to bring these fresh starts, clean slates, new beginnings with partnerships. Um, remember that this could be you saying, these are my new goals. These are the people that I need to network with in order to make that happen. You're looking for balance in your life. And this is an opportunity to leave behind um, these old relationships, leaving these groups, leaving these. Now, these groups can be like on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or, or whatever it is that no longer serves you that like you're, it, it doesn't even resonate with you. And that now you're saying, oh, I'm really into bowling and I really want to become a professional bowler. So I'm going to have to join these groups or these activities, or I want to have this book published and this is what I have to do. Um, whatever it is that you're working towards, it's you aligning new groups or networking for your, uh, through your work in order to make those things happen. And you're looking for more harmonious connections. So set your intentions for equitable collaborations and seeking the, the internal um, equilibrium. This is really super potent because this is the first one that's going to occur in Libra since 2016. So take a moment, think back, what were you doing in 2016? Uh, this will be a, uh, a reignition and a rewiring, a refreshing of this area of your life. So think about could some part of your work benefit from a collaborator who complements your skill set? Um, with the moon here conjunct all of this, this is an opportunity for you to write down the qualities and the capabilities of the person that you would like to attract to you or your, or your goals or your hopes and also what you want in yourself. What is it that you would like to attract and bring to you? The moon does oppose Chiron. So we have your moon in your 11th house and Chiron in your fifth house. Chiron is the wounded healer. It is people, places, and things that it could be children, lovers. It could be um, activities or groups or projects that you had started before, but Chiron is where the wound is. So be mindful of the types of people that you draw in during this eclipse. I always share, I remind myself and I remind others that when you nurture and care for others, don't do for them what they can do for themselves because you're no longer doing it for them. You're doing it for yourself because you're enabling them and not giving them the opportunity to learn and grow from their mistakes. And so this being the house of children, use caution or the house of lovers, the house of activities and projects and things that bring joy to you, use caution with what you are um, pulling in and, and what you are doing. I'm reminded that the lunar nodes are are parts of your they're, they're areas of your life that the nodes switch every 18 months and they go um, clockwise when all the other planets go counterclockwise and so this is you finding a new direction and this is about you finding it through rebalancing your priorities now that the nodes are moved into the signs of identity aries you identifying um, what it is that you want to do and Libra, um, the connection that you have with others, finding a balance between who you are as an individual and your relationship with your social networks, your, your work networks, 
uh, your um, like networks on computer technology, like your electronic networks. With the South Node in Libra, some of your long-term partnerships and your alliances, they're definitely going to be coming to an end. Uh, it, some of it could be a natural ending that no longer of needing that, no longer uh, aligned with that. Know that the eclipses eclipse people, places, and things into our life and out of our life, and they are natural endings. With the North Node in Aries, this is you finding your unique voice for your motivations. This is you setting the boundaries, you fighting for your individual goals, finding new ways to express yourself with what it is that you want to do. Because of the planet Uranus's location, so Uranus is in your um, sixth house of your uh, balance between home and work. The Uranus is also in the house of your mental, physical health, well-being. It's also where we find mentors and guides that support us. Because of Uranus's placement, it's an opportunity for you to restructure your relationships with the people that are that work for you or or collaborate with you at your work or that you volunteer for this is also the house of daily habits so um, this could be um, medical professionals you know like where you see a doctor or a counselor you are looking for more equality more inclusiveness and respect of differences and so take that into consideration at this time then on uh, october 22nd Mercury is going to enter into Scorpio. So when Mercury enters into Scorpio, the first thing that happens is our thoughts, our ideas, our communication. You are going to be going within, taking things, uh, taking time out, pay attention to what is your body saying, uh, your dreams, your intuition, what are your spirit guides saying, like focusing. The 12th house is the house of isolation. It's also the house of, of hidden supports. And it's where are you getting guidance from? Uh, a shaman, are you doing the Akashic records? Are you seeking out an astrologer? Like what are you doing to gain this information? Mercury and Scorpio. Scorpio. Scorpio is deep thinking. It's probing. It's asking the questions of that everybody else is afraid to ask. And so it's about diving into the depths of your thoughts and your community and looking for authenticity. It's uncovering hidden truths. And at this time, you're going to have to use caution with power struggles in some of your discussions because you're going to be speaking your mind and not everybody is going to be appreciative of that. Uh, the next day, the sun moves into Scorpio also. So now we have the sun, Mercury and Mars all there. Now, when the sun enters, uh, the energy is going to intensify. It's going to be a, a huge period of personal growth. Um, Scorpio is birth, death, rebirth. It's the it's transformation. It's about shedding old layers. So this is you getting rid of breaking the chains of karma, getting rid of past things. I look at it as the 12th house is what you have brought from generational trauma and now bringing it to the light and dealing with some of it. Um, I also look to Scorpio at this time as a snake and you are growing, changing and evolving. And when a snake has grown big enough, it needs to shed its skin because it's transforming. And so that's what's going to be going on with you, shedding old layers of who you were. So use this time to let go of no longer what serves you and focus on your inner desires and your inner passions. Next on the 28th we have there we go on the 28th we have uh the month is going to conclude with this lunar eclipse in taurus so this taurus is uh we have the moon conjunct jupiter in your sixth house of taurus and then the aries north node is in your your fifth house of fun and joy and pleasure and creativity and so it's combining the two energies of these houses and one is concluding and one is like passing the baton off to the other of where you're supposed to be focused. 
So it concludes the month with Taurus on October 28th. The uh, eclipse is going to illuminate your values, your finances. It's going to be material security, your health. It's where you are of service to others. It's also the house of pets. It's going to be a time that you're going to be reassessing your relationship with money, your possessions, your self-worth, and releasing attachments to outdated beliefs and embracing a more grounded sense of abundance. This is the third and final lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus that represents your money and security. And so this could be also health issues ending. Remember that the sixth house represents um, where you volunteer, where you're of service, but it's also your health inside and out. And so now you could finally have all of the necessary things and figure things out that, okay, I can now move on from this. Because this is the third and final, um, I, I want you to think back to what began on November 19th, 2021. That's when this eclipse started in this series of identifying these two areas of your life and what you needed to overcome. And so for the everybody, it represented money and it represented um, of their personal habits of money and spending and the economy. And so with you, it had to be with your personal financial habits, but it also had to do with your health, your mental health, your physical health. Were you taking care of it? Were you follow, Were you going to the counselor, going to the doctor? Were you um, getting enough rest? Were you taking time out for you? And so now we have this, this, the, you have the resources to cover all of this. You've had this opportunity and we have, um, this is conjunct, um, Jupiter that's opposite of Mars. So, so now we look at this and say opposite of Mars, what's going on? Well, Mars is you, the direction in which you're supposed to be going, you finding your voice, you are being asked to revisit what are your uh, what is your approach to your resources taking taking charge of your financial future taking charge of your health and knowing that that this last year and a half two years of where you've come from and what your needs are and seeking them out instead of letting things get so bad that it like brings you down um revisiting your approach with mars in your 12th house is that's not where you want to be in isolation. It's Aries, you, you speaking up for yourself. This is going to be a major release and a, and a complete ending so that you're now able to focus on the Aries of yourself, your values, and the Libra sector of where do I want to go? What do I want to do? I want to focus on what brings me pleasure. I want to focus on my goals. I don't want to have to focus on my health all the time. I don't want to have to focus on um, this. I need to find boundaries with partners and contracts and legal matters because I'm focused on joy in my life. I want to focus on where I'm going to go, who I'm going to connect with, and things that I'm going to do. Uh, this could be music. It could be creativity. This is starting new things in this area of your life. And how are you using it for your career? All right, so Sagittarius, I hope that you found this video resource to be helpful as a guide in your transformation in your life. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below.